and final ProCon at the Pier series. Tonight we're going to be talking about marijuana. It is a debate about Proposition 64, the legalization of marijuana that's on our state ballots this year. If you're not sure how to vote, hopefully by the end of our hour-long discussion today, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what you think. So today we are going to be Facebook living to this event. We're going to be video recording it. We have meet local media coming. NBC4 is here. Getty Images is here, and local press are here. Uh, so just know that uh, you are your comments will be immortalized. Uh, the format of tonight's discussion is going to be three minutes opening remarks from the proponent and three minute opening remarks from the opponent. Then we're going to have 20 minutes of moderator-led discussion, and I will soon introduce our very distinguished moderator. And then we're going to have audience Q&A. So my suggestion is if you think you might want to ask a question, just start thinking about it now. Uh, that 20 minute time is going to go by real fast, so I just encourage you to think of questions sooner than later. Uh, also briefly mention that we are here with the thanks to the Santa Monica Pier that is organizing this event, along with ProCon.org. I'm here with ProCon.org. This organization, we have a booth in the back. And our organization looks at pros and cons of controversial issues. We're nonpartisan, and that's why we've been asked to present tonight's debate. Because we're nonpartisan and look at both sides, we want all of you to have a fair shake, fair understanding of what these issues are all about without media spin, without advertising, without political ads, without all the stuff that gets in the way from us understanding issues. The theme of tonight's talk is the return of civil discourse. We expect our debaters tonight to be very nice to one another. We want to model what it looks like to have intelligent discussions that don't break down. Uh, and so they will be modeling their, their best behavior as we have this discussion that's on a very controversial topic, but we're going to keep it civil. So that said, folks, uh, let me now introduce our distinguished moderator, Mr. Alan Thicke. He is a seven-time Emmy nominee five for writing, two for acting. Uh, Alan is someone that you've seen his face, you know his voice from Optimum Tax Relief, you've seen him on Growing Pains, you've seen him on Thick of the Night, you've seen him on his currently running series called Unusually Thick, uh, which is a terrific reality-based uh, television show that it is about Alan and his family, uh, and it's, uh, it's really well done. One thing you might not know about Alan is, remember that show Different Strokes? He wrote the theme song. Remember Facts of Life? He wrote that theme song. Do you ever watch Wheel of Fortune? He wrote that theme song. Uh, Alan's done a lot of amazing things. He is one of the most recognized and famous Canadian celebrities ever. He's on Canada's uh, Walk of Fame. Uh, we are very excited to have him here tonight uh, presenting this final debate in our series uh, on marijuana legalization. So you'll be in very good hands, folks. So without further ado, Mr. Alan Thick. Thank you, Alan. Thank Appreciate you for coming. It was very flattering. You pretty much read it the way I wrote it. Thank you. Louis, how do you do? Nice to meet you. Hello, nice to see you. So, uh, anyway, and I, I have uh, points that uh, they've asked me to make sure I bring up. I should be a supremely qualified moderator because I know nothing. I, have, uh, I will not be uh, burdened by facts or information. Uh, I come to you as neutrally as I've been neutered, uh, and uh, uh, we will hope to have an energetic discussion between these, these fine people who do know exactly what they're talking about. Not only am I neutral, what do you call them? Nonpartisan. I'm, I'm beyond nonpartisan. I'm Canadian, so <laughs> my vote only counts on Dancing with the Stars. That's. Uh, or beer. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, let us get started by me moving uh, into the neutral position here. Uh, so much that's uh, interesting about the subject of marijuana for us casual observers. Uh, and and uh, I think what makes it so important as a, uh, as a ballot initiative is that it touches so many facets of our life. It's not just about whether to get high or not. It's about the billion dollars uh, coming into the economy. It's about uh, the safety of children. Uh, it, it's about what, what happens uh, if, they're, uh, if, if edibles are too easy for them to get. Um, it, it's about the, um, the medical cannabis uh, history that we have uh, in this state. And uh, so, so much involved. It's about legally. How do we 
measure whether somebody is impaired before they get in a car. So uh, uh, many parts of our lives are touched by the uh, marijuana question, and we will have answers on all of those subjects tonight, right? So uh, first of all, just a, a, a quick survey. How many of you are in favor of the legalization of marijuana recreationally for adults? Show of hands. In not, favor. Not in this province. And, and who is against? Not on this province. Who is against? A couple against. Uh, I, partly I bring that up because Procon.org, our fine uh, sponsor, uh, takes pride in the fact that if you, it, first of all, it's the number one educational website uh, in the country. A well-kept secret, 20 million uh, views last year. It's used by mostly students and teachers, but also pundits and people writing and speculating on uh, anything, any subject from marijuana to gun control, immigration, abortion, the Keystone Pipeline, whether the Redskins should change their name. <laughs> it's all there on Procon.org, and we'll hope you check it out. And the importance of that organization is to keep the political dialogue alive in the new year. We have gotten so many new uh, ears and eyeballs <clears throat> on the subject of politics this year. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Uh, and, and we want to keep it that way. It's, it's healthy to have that discussion and that awareness. Procon.org is very proud of the fact that about a third of the people who go to their website change their mind. You show up with a, a, a position on any subject, and a lot of people come away from uh, their visit to Procon.org thinking, eh, maybe I'm not so sure anymore. So very valuable, and I urge you all to check it out. All right, this is me sitting down and being quiet, minding my own business. Uh, you should meet our two fine um, proponent slash uh, opponent. Uh, the proponent for uh, the legalization is Karen O'Keefe, Karen is from the Marijuana Policy Project, and uh, I'm proud of it. Nice to have you. And uh, over here we have Luis Alvarado, and he is from the Citizens Against Legalizing Marijuana. Uh, an acronym is COM. Well, actually, the person who was going to be here is from that organization. I'm actually a spokesperson. For the campaign, no on Prop 64. No on 64. Okay, your positions are quite clear. Why don't we uh, welcome, first of all, Karen to uh, speak for us. Tell us why you are in favor of legalization. In a freedom-loving country, it simply shouldn't be illegal for adults to use marijuana. Every objective study has shown that marijuana is far safer than alcohol. It's less toxic, it's less addictive, and it's not linked to violence. Prop 64 would allow Californians to use marijuana in private, and it would allow them to possess and grow a limited amount and to purchase it from a regulated store. It sets up a system of regulation that's based on what the legislature here passed to regulate existing medical marijuana businesses last year, and which is being implemented in the coming years. Replacing marijuana prohibition with regulation will be safer for consumers, it will be safer for youth, it will be safer for the environment and for workers. When somebody buys marijuana in the legal market, they have no idea what they're getting. Uh, they don't know the potency. It could be laced with dangerous pesticides, illegal molds, or even other drugs. Once Prop 64 passes, somebody will go to a store and they'll have a tested and labeled product and they'll know what they're getting. When it comes to youth, under prohibition, marijuana is sold in the streets. It, once this passes, if it passes, it will be re replaced with a regulatory structure and any business that sells to a minor could have their license revoked. Uh, replacing prohibition with regulation will also stop breaking apart families because of marijuana arrests. And this measure would devote about 60% of the revenue after set, certain set-asides to education and treatment for youth and for drug problems. Workers would also be far better off. Uh, under the illegal underground market, workers are very vulnerable to abuse and exploitation. There was a recent investigative report that found that growers in Northern California, in some cases trimmers were being deprived of their wages and women were being even subject to sexual harassment and, insult, and assault under this cloud of secrecy. Once you replace prohibition with regulation, you can bring regulation and control and then workers can get social security, unemployment insurance, and everything else that everybody gets in every legal industry. Also, they won't get felony 
companies on their records. Finally, the environment would fare far better under regulation than prohibition. We don't see anyone growing grapes or hops in the national parks in order to make beer or wine. That's because it's regulated. You've probably read that is happening with marijuana here. We see streams diverted, polluted, and we see all kinds of hazardous wastes in our parks and booby traps, you know, poisons that end up getting into the food chain. That won't happen in a regulated market once all the marijuana production is brought and controlled. Also, the measure itself devotes a substantial amount of funding to clean up the environmental damage that has already been done because of these illegal grows. I know one concern people have is what this will do with patients. I want to be absolutely clear, it in no way undermines the rights under Prop 215. That's Those all lie. remain in place. That's you can ask questions lie. later on, yeah. and I'd be happy to answer them. But it, it doesn't change any of it. It specifically says it, and it actually increases parental protections and provides $2 million a year in funding for medical marijuana. Prohibition has been a disastrous failure and it has distracted law enforcement. Prop 64 is a comprehensive and thoughtful approach that would be much better for our state. All right, you've heard the why, and by the way, uh, we didn't uh, bring it up before, but there is a question and answer period, so it won't be necessary to shout your position at uh, this point of our, court, of our uh, presentation. Uh, lots of time for that. Anxious to hear from everybody. That was the why, Mr. Alvarado, why not? Thank you first for the invitation. This is a great setting. Uh, you know, I think uh, you, you brought civil liberties as being the main reason why this should be passed. But the reality is I was listening to Justice Ginsburg just the other day on, uh, uh, on an interview talking about how we use those excuses of civil liberties and try not hold them up as pedestals to promote an idea. Unfortunately, that gets misconstrued and the reality of implementation of those can be more damaging than the civil liberties that we try to move forward. Prop 64 uh, is one of those situations. What we are trying to do is not pose a moral argument about many of those points that you made are accurate. And most of uh, us in the campaign agree with you. Uh, what we don't agree is the way that it was written. It was written by profiteers mm -hmm. whose sole reason to come and invest millions of dollars in getting this proposition passed is because they went through a mathematical algorithm and they realized that there is billions of dollars to be made in California. Uh, what they don't tell us and what I didn't hear from you is the consequences. You know, I heard you say many times that there are certainties of what this law will do and will not do. And we're fortunate that in Colorado where this law is already implemented, we can take a snapshot and see the collateral damage that's already occurring there. And the promises that they heard in Colorado, the same promises you're offering today. In Colorado, we see, uh, we saw a 60 minute show on Sunday where the pediatrician for this uh, Colorado emergency room said that he can't believe how babies are now, 48% of the babies are being born with THC in their system. Uh, something that nobody talks about in California. You know, we're talking about 900% increase in criminal investigations. This is a letter on October 12th by the District Attorney of Denver, Colorado, where he's telling us in California, this is damaging. Uh, arrests of minors are up. Deaths in the highways have spiked. Uh, and this is factual information that nobody's talking about on your side. So it comes with a price. Uh, we believe that those civil liberties should be promoted. But this law specifically was not written properly. Even the people who support medical marijuana right now are against it. And it's because the reality is that it's built to make money. And the only thing it offers the only thing that Prop 64 proponents offer is a billion dollar tax for Sacramento. And we know what happens when money gets sent to Sacramento. You know, we heard what happened, you know, years ago, I remember hearing the California lottery is gonna come to California and we're gonna have all the money go to our schools. If you live in California, you know that money is somewhere in a bullet train somewhere in Sacramento. So if the only thing that the proponents of this law is offering uh, is civil liberties, 
and a billion dollars for Sacramento in exchange for the collateral damage that it actually brings, specifically to the underserved, underdeveloped communities in California, it's not worth it. You both touched on the, you both touched on the economics of it all. Let's stay with, there, uh, with that for just a moment because uh, the other things that we're reading are the fact that because uh, legislators have to be so sensitive to the nature of this uh, uh, of, of this argument, and that being marijuana, which we uh, be, you know have been fought at the federal level for decades now, because of that sensitivity, they have promised that of the billion dollars that goes to Sacramento, it will be specifically targeted at things like uh, mental health, education, infrastructure, uh, uh, addiction uh, treatments. Uh, uh, are none of those to be believed or, uh, 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 I mean, apart from the profiteering that will be obvious, uh, are we not somewhat comforted by the intention in the bill of where the money will go? Well, 